talk about maintenance in your dreadlocks. Maintenance in your dreadlocks is one of those formats that pretty much keep your dreadlocks looking healthy, look, have them growing strong, and have you with that desired look that you want and that outcome. You, know, you see everybody else's hair and you feel like, oh, you know, it look good, you've been growing for years or whatever, but if you don't know that regimen, then you don't know what's keeping that hair healthy or what's making it happen. <coughs> so the same regimen I use to start my locks and all other natural hair processes, the same regimen we're going to get started with when you start your maintenance it will be a dreadlocks. Some people call it retwisting, I call it maintenance in because there are different methods that you can use to get that process going. Uh, today we're going to talk about the two different ones from palm roll retwisting to interlocking. Now, palm roll retwisting is my favorite. I like to do the palm roll because it adds nutrients. It adds all those different vitamins through the products that you don't use through the hand. It just gives that shiny outcome. With palm rolling, I basically am just taking, you know, my hands and using what God has given me, these big old uh, powder puff gloves to just roll your hair up and do what I need to do. And then interlocking is a more forced type me method that just pretty much takes the hair and forces it to go together and just leaves it there. The reason that's one of my least favorite is because at that point, you know, it's a little more free form. Products are not in there and it's kind of robbed on certain levels. The hair texture kind of changes and, excuse me, it makes the locks a little harder. So you just kind of want to watch that aspect when you're doing it. Because, you know, I've seen a lot of people go down that road and they, they never come back. They've been and broke some stuff up, snatched out edges, just did a whole bunch of different things. So, first let's talk about the palm roller. In the palm rolling, I start off with the, sh the same conditioning. Uh, shampoo process. I use this because this is where you get your best level of moisturization. So in this, because even though it's not been a force measure, you're still retwisting the hair and the hair is not used to nor is it made to be twisted on. So we want to give the hair those moisturization levels. We want to give it the proteins and all the different other things that, that make this hair valuable and strong enough for the aspect of longevity when twisting and you know having just the lifestyle of dreadlocking pretty much. So now, after we get through with that, and you've received all those different little kinks and nicks that I want you to have from the shampoo bowl, we're going to get into the palm rolling aspect. The tools I use in this one is just pretty much my regular rat tail comb. This one's a little chewed up, I'd have had it for a long time. Um, with the lock and curl spray, which is this mess right here. And then you got your tight, tight hole by Talia Wajid. And that's pretty much all we're using for this whole aspect. Dipping your comb in there after spraying the lock and curl, pretty much to saturate the scalp. You're gonna use just a small amount and, and spread it over the roots and start your twisting. Now, some people twist really tight. They start that coiling thing and they say, oh, no clips, no combs, no this, none of that. That's fine if you wanna be innovative and start and go down that route. I don't do all that. I'm very simplistic. I use my clips, I use my combs, I do all of that. I'm not trying to be a musician. I'm not trying to make this a Houdini act. And I'm not trying to be all extra creative when it comes to getting your hair done. I use a simple way so that, because I've seen that just gives valuable outcomes. So with retwisting this hair, I don't hit it no more than two to three times, depending on how many rotations are needed for that process, just so I can see where the hair is actually getting tighter to the scalp. I'm not trying to put the client in any type of discomfort or pain. I'm not trying to make it too tight to make it last forever because I'm not thinking about key sweat in this aspect. I just want the hair to be healthy and be retwisted and get used and trained to being twisted on because as this hair grows and you shed those hundreds of hairs into the canal of this dreadlock that you're now creating, that can be a lot of weight. People don't want that weight on their neck. They're not trying to go to the gym with their shoulders and shit. So just go ahead and retwist it and keep it light and make it a simplistic aspect so that they don't feel like it's a job, their hair is not heavy, there's no buildup, there's no none of that. You want your clients and your people to have successful journeys so that you know they just feel comfortable coming back to you or if you're doing it yourself. You just want to be able to see that beneficial aspect so that you know you're in the right place. I was just reading on my Instagram a few minutes ago after posting a video and people was just fed the hell up. They fed up with their hair falling out, they fed up with their hair not growing, they fed up with not knowing what's going on. There's a million products out here on the shelf and everybody's saying, oh my shit is the best. My shit is gonna make it happen. Not always the case. A lot of these folks stuff right here is not organic. It ain't natural. It ain't this, it ain't that. Don't have moisturization in it. It's just some makeshift stuff they didn't put together and sold you because it was a nice little pretty case. That don't mean anything. I've seen a lot and I spent my money on a lot of that mess for that shit not to work for me. So I'm sending y'all some letters I want my goddamn money back. But like I was saying, when you, when you do the things that you're doing 
in the hair, you want to actually use great products so that you can get that great outcome. Now, with my lock and curl and tight hold, I'm not saturating the hair to where it's extremely heavy and I'm putting a whole bunch in here. You can see enough of what I'm doing, putting it on that hair, putting it on the scalp and rubbing it in to use the um, what the product is pretty much made for. A simplistic hold from both sides. Now the lock and curl is a spray because I don't like waxes. And inside of this, you got a more of a botanical situation where oils have been infused, vitamin restore agents have been infused, all of these things because I made this myself with the mindset of knowing that locks with shedded dead hair needed a whole lot of help, a whole lot. You needed moisture, you needed certain vitamins, because you're holding on to stuff that your body would normally let go. Since you're gonna force that thing, there's other things you have to do to balance that back out. So that's the reason why I came up with that solution to do exactly what I needed to do. Now, um, the reason we're talking a lot about products right now is because retwisting, palm rolling, is product based. That's it. You're just assisting and making sure that the process is going correctly. The hair is locking up on its own. You are not a hair locker. You you are just a person that to make sure that the process is going well. So babysit that hair very well and do just do just that. Um, after putting pretty much twisting this together and clipping everything all down, she's gonna get sprayed again. It's gonna spray the roots and the, and the edges just to make sure that the whole head got a little bit of that solution to train the hair, lay it down, and put that person under the dry. Now, you do not wanna do use a million clips. Under that dryer, that clip will heat up. That's aluminum, that's, that's metal. You don't wanna have all that in the client's head. That's very uncomfortable. Whether you want them to dry completely or you feel like, you know, this is gonna offer a great hold. Also, speaking on clips, your clip placement is extremely important. It makes no sense to hold your clip right at the root of your lock. As you see here, this is the root of my lock here. Going down the lock, all close to the bottom, this is where I have it clipped. So that's like 75% to the end of the lock and all the way at the bottom of the lock, just so that as I retwist, you can hold everything that I have going on here. And we saw you, when we saw your hair? The August, August. So in this time, she has still matured. She's done everything she needs to do, and this is what your is it third retwist. Probably third or fourth. Yeah, third or fourth retwist, which is cool. And um, she's already locked up, pretty much good bud. And now we can saw the palm rolling aspect of her, so that's what she's getting here today. And that's just to make sure that the hair is already getting trained to do exactly what I needed to do, how I needed to do it. So. Even when you use the right clipping, you use the right amount of clips, it pretty much works well with what you're doing. So you assist your client in the dryer for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on how strong your dryer is. And I use Hell's Keepers as dryer. I got my dryer straight from the devil himself, just to make sure that this hair gets dried and does what I needed to do, when I needed to do. Amen? Amen. So, so let me show you what it's like when the hair comes straight from the dryer. And this is only with a palm rolling technique so that you guys can understand what palm rolling is. It's more product based than it is uh, more force lock based. So, give me one second, I'll show you. And now interlocking. Interlocking is something totally different than a retwist. Interlocking is not product based. It's basically like I was saying to you before, more of a free form. So in this aspect, the tools that you're gonna use and what I use is only a safety pin. So the hair has to be dry, it cannot be moist, it cannot have any type of product or anything in it. What what I start, how I start this process off is with the same shampoo process, um, clarifying, moisturizing, then moisturization from your conditioner. Conditioning in this aspect is extremely important, extremely, I can't stress that enough, because of what you're doing and how you're forcing the hair to stay in one position for a good period of time. With, with a palm rolling, the hair reverts back to its natural place. With interlocking, there's no reversion. That's a force type method that you're gonna use to just force that hair to stay in one position. So you kinda wanna be careful and mindful of all your, of your tension rate when it comes to that or you can snap that person's hair off instantly. I've seen it happen too many times. That could be very, very, very dangerous. 
So with the, um, with my interlock and I take my safety pin, install it in just into the end of the lock, pretty much. Going through the base of the lock in the north, south, east, west method, depending on how many rotations are needed in this aspect. Some people may need a few, some people may need more. It just depends on how how long in between it went through with their regimen or if this is their first time actually doing so. So you want to kind of do a hair and scalp analysis before getting this started just to make sure that the mini, um, the rotation that you're using works for you in the long run and you're not just snatching somebody's ball head just because you want this hair to be tight and look a certain way, okay? The regimen process for this one, I tell my clients to come every two months, giving that hair some time to grow, some time to just be free, relax, and be itself and doesn't feel like it's at harm's way. If that hair feel harm, it will stop growing and pop off on its own. It is a protector. It is not here just for you to feel beautiful. So if you was feeling beautiful just because you had bangs and you ugly in real life, that sounds personal. It ain't got nothing to do with your hair. You understand? Cool. Now, making sure that you, you properly protein this hair, making sure it has a proper moisturization and the hair is dry, you're going to go ahead and get that, get that process started by going through your different rotations. After you finish rotations, I like to do what I call a frizz control. In frizz control, I take those hairs and I clean them up. A lot of people just let that hair stay there, just let it be free. But I don't want frizzing hair, and I'm definitely not going to prune the hair and cut it out, cut it away from my lock. I want my lock to have a strong foundation, nothing weak. So I'm going to leave every hair that comes along with that process, I'm going to leave it in there by wrapping it in like the lock extension method, the key turning method, just wrap it back into the lock, just making sure that that, health, that hair is healthy and it stays in place like I need it to. And it just makes it look clean and, you know, all over, like they got a palm roll, but they actually didn't. Sometimes it'll stay, sometimes it may come back loose, but I'd rather you start training that hair and then your client used to having that frizz control maintained just so that it'll look healthy. So what I did was, I made a quick diagram for you guys to see what I did and actually enter in that interlocking format just so that you can understand what we're working with, what we're dealing with, why is, why is happening or what's going on. For people that are interlocking, they can shampoo a lot more. People that with, with palm rolling, you can't shampoo as much because you want to keep those products in the hair. Now, just because you went through a free forming technique, I still try to give you some level of vitamins and value in that hair just to make sure it's healthy. So, just understand that hair level, understand what's going on there, and understand what's really, really happening in your interlocking because if not, this is where you will break up. This is where you will lose, and then you will lose faster than you would with any other type of styling and methods in your hair because you're pulling your hair, you're holding it to no end. You're not giving it any room to breathe, revert, or do anything that's going to do naturally. But you're just holding that thing tight. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes that can be a very terrible thing. Now, speaking of terrible, for all you lame brains that feel like my hair is thinning, my hair is weakening already, so I'm going to go and interlock it, that's not going to work. If you already have thinning and breakage and you want to go and enforce that thing on top of that, you're going to actually lose a lot faster than before. Because just snatching it and holding it in one place does not mean that that's being fixed. Sometimes you have to understand where you start off your problem so that you can fix it with a solution. So just sitting there, just forcing stuff, wrapping stuff, doing a whole bunch of extra stuff is not going to cut it when it comes to interlocking versus palm rolling. So if you sweat a lot, interlock is for you. You need to shampoo a little bit more, you got a scalp irritation. And like it's for you. Not a hair issue, a scalp issue. Some people have the shampoo a little more often. Some people have, you know, dermatological issues, different things like that. Those people can interlock because they just need to have a different health regimen. Because I'm not going to tell you to be nasty. Your mom didn't teach you to be nasty growing up, so I'm not going to make you nasty now. So if you got to shampoo a little more often, you got certain things you got to do just to make sure you smell good because you know you get a little musty every now and then. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. Interlock that thing and let the palm roll and go. But if you're going to palm roll and you want to come in on your every three weeks, if you're going to interlock, then you're going to come in every two months. You could do a soft palm roll, um, uh, yeah, in the midst of the interlock if you want to, but it's not that serious. Yeah, you using that lock tool? I hate that damn thing. You tried it? Yes. <laughs> It doesn't want, it doesn't like how the, the safety pin closes and I can just grab it through. It doesn't. It just has a hole, you slip the hair in. If the hair is thick enough, it may lock into this little corner. If not, <laughs> it'll slide out. Then you got the other thing. Like say, say for instance, Sha come in and want to interlock and I got this other little tool. It's going to get disrespected. <laughs> it's going to get straight. It's going to get lost in his hair. I'm like, where the fuck did it go? So I'd rather just the safety pin. You can close it. Ain't nobody getting stuck. Ain't nothing happening. 
I can just grab it and pull it straight on through. Uh, how much is it like to us? A hundred dollars. Where? You paid a hundred dollars for that? <laughs> yes. Why you didn't tell me that? I would have told you to take it back. I can't take it back to bed because I brought the problems. Because I, I was trying to support her and you know she was doing the like thing when she saw me she was like oh my god you know you can have one. Oh my god no thank you <laughs> I, I, I needed it do you need to record me man? you already on there <laughs> somebody asked me to buy I tried to go as slow as I can, but you know, I'm a quick draw McGraw, so I was moving pretty quickly. But ultimately, I think you guys can still see what's happening. I'm gonna do it, let the video run a few times just so that you can see over and over what's happening. Any questions, concerns, or comments, you know, you could always reach out to me. But you know, some of these comments, I see some of my don't. So call me if you need me. Alright? This was Palm Roller versus Inlock. And I'm at this piece. Bye.